Welcome home, Rep Pack. Marcus here, and welcome to Comfort Car Tunes, the show where I collect absolutely everything from the late 90s, 2000s, all the way to the modern day. And I'm also trying to create the world's biggest SpongeBob and Nickelodeon collection. But not just that, the creator, CEO, and founder of this show does have her own publicly broadcasted show in Bikini Bottom. Bikini Bottom's top public access show for the last 20 weeks, Squidward's House Party. I heard it's a hit. And Shady Shoals. But I hope you beautiful people are having an amazing day. And if you guys aren't, you guys know the drill. Bikini bottom bound. Camera flip. In you go. It's about to get a whole lot brighter, Rep Pack, because your boy is here. And today, we are going to be going to do something awesome. We are going to be doing one of our pickup videos. So, if you guys don't know what this pickup series is, is every now and then, it's very rare. Very, very, very rare, because people usually get to them very quickly. I'm able to pick up some awesome lots of SpongeBob, Nickelodeon, or whatever type of cartoon-related merch from either Facebook Marketplace, Instagram, OfferUp, Craigslist, some random avenue that ends up being local. And sometimes those are the best deals even better than the ones that I order online in lots and today is no different we are gonna be going to Rancho Cucamonga or let me do that correctly Rancho this is a monkey whose name is Rancho Cucamonga and this is another uh, monkey whose name is Cucamonga because there is a new Spongebob lot that came up it looks pretty good from just the top but it was $30 and more than the $30 Rancho Cucamonga is a bit of a drive for me so I wanted to make sure it was worth it so I asked the person like hey do you have uh, more pictures that I I could take a look at before I actually drive all the way up to Rancho Cucamonga, which is the, my favorite city in all of Southern California just for its name. He's like, sure. So he took a couple pictures of everything that he had. And then I knew, okay, I got to go pick this up, set the deal with him. So that way, you know, somebody else doesn't come and scoop it up from underneath my feet because likely they just saw the top of the box just like I did. And that's why they didn't jump into it immediately. So I already set the day with him. I'm going to be driving up there to go pick it up. Karina's going to be hopping with us too to help us film along the way and just to hang out. And we're gonna check out everything when we get back to the cavern. I mean, I might take a little sneak peek while we're in the car. But this whole lot is gonna be 30 bucks. So it's gonna be an amazing deal, I think. Let's go ahead and head over to Rancho Cucamonga. Okay, so we're in the car and we are gonna be heading over to Rancho Cucamonga. Can you say Rancho Cucamonga? Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, we'll work on it on the way there. Uh, Rancho Cucamonga. It is not an easy one. But let's go ahead and head on over there. The guys the guy said he's gonna leave the box outside and we're just gonna walk up leave the, the cash underneath the doormat should be nice and simple if we can film when we get there i'll let you guys know but either way we're gonna go get it we just got here we're gonna go outside and grab the box well i'm gonna go grab it karina's gonna film from a distance <laughs> all right so he just grabbed it i left the money under the doormat 30 bucks let's go drive somewhere else so i don't look like a weirdo looking and freaking out <laughs> outside their house and then we'll take a look at what we got a little sneak peek before we get back to the cavern okay so we are pulling over so we can get that little sneak peek like i said man we are moving out here we've done a few of these trips now i started to feel like the uh uber driver like the uber each driver of spongebob merge <laughs> just driving around picking up the goods it's a big box i'm gonna try to bring it up here if i can that looks cool looks epic we got karate spongebob season three season one season two. Oh, this is a new tin i've never seen before we have some lego items oh my god there's stuff in here too i think there's stuff inside this too oh Ooh. yes the goods oh i don't have this this is from the movie tiny uh, patty mobile what is this even from that is sick oh man i'm hyped are you hyped He's hyped. He said he's hyped. <laughs> have a poster in here. Okay, there's a bunch of other pieces in here too. Man, there's so many good pieces in here. We're gonna check it out all how we get back to the cavern. There's just too much to really look at all in this moment, but I'm trying because it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll meet you guys when we get back to the cavern, like I said, and we'll take a look at everything closer. Okay, we are back. So let's go through everything together. I cannot wait. I didn't actually get to meet the guy. If you guys saw, I just put the money underneath his doormat, and he, you know, I just pretty much left after that. I think he's just trying to get rid of all this stuff. And, you know, as Mr. Krabs says, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So we're going to go through it together. We aren't going to be adding it up and, like, you know, doing a total of how much it was worth 
worth overall today because that's more of our thrifting videos I mean we hypothetically could just because of like how much money I save but everything in this is something that's going directly into my collection it will be cherished always I have no intentions on getting rid of any of this stuff so the value to me really doesn't necessarily matter that much as much as it is just how much that we saved from it because if we get rid of something whether it's on whatnot or our shop it's usually to go right back into building this collection but in this case all these items are well already building the collection so without any further ado let's sit down and check everything out together and see what kind of magic we were able to pick up for $30 okay so we're sitting down here let's go ahead and go through it all but I had to start off with this one because honestly this was the thing that made me go make the trip, and that is this SpongeBob shower gel. I mean, look at him. He's surfing on a wave, and he's not even on the board. The board's just kind of surfing behind him, but it's got this epic, like, I don't even know. It reminds me of, like, Bumper or some kind of advert they would have had for, like, the Nicktoons summertime, like, marathons. It has a sick surfboard and has a pop top on top there to open it up, but the fact that it comes with this little holster, you'll see there's actually some, like, grime there, but I think I should be able to get that off. Off relatively easily but the fact that it came with this holster here for that particular shower gel it's like I'm pretty sure they weren't selling this shower gel separately as like uh, refills so this whole design was essentially created for this particular bottle of shower gel which is just quality you only get in these uh, 2000s products I mean nowadays the shower gel kind of looks like this it's just a yellow bottle with a black top so basically once you ran out of your shower gel you could then put the bottle back and you have this really cool Spongebob display and this came out in 2007 I would imagine I was gonna say like I was gonna say maybe it was for the big one the Spongebob the big one special which was like all around surfing I thought maybe that could have been like what it was themed around but that came out in 2009 so 2007 is the year this was released it's just for the Spongebob beach vibes so that item right here, I'm giving a 10 out of 10. It is a little bit, like I said, I think what they probably did was they had it on display in their bathroom. So anytime the sink overflowed or anything like that, it probably got inside the plastic. I don't imagine that's from the actual shower gel. It doesn't seem like it's leaking, but I think, like I said, I should be able to clean that up and it's still sealed too. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a 10. Next up here, we have this SpongeBob crochet pillow. Uh, the box is a little bit dented here, but this is from the green and white label era. And believe it or not, I this is all the, I'll tell you all the items that are new to the Collection. That's new. The SpongeBob shampoo. That's new. And this is new as well, too. I'm gonna open it up though, because I look like it has been. Actually, yeah, it's been open, but they never used it. Here's like what you would actually crochet onto the pillow. Here's this little SpongeBob face, which is so freaking cute. But a long time ago, like before I was serious about collecting SpongeBob stuff. You know what I mean? A long time ago, I was like serious, but now I'm serious I turned my collecting up to Wumbo because I used to like not know I was gonna be this big of a Spongebob collector I was just getting stuff here and there and I saw this at a Goodwill like years ago and I left it behind because I had already bought a few other items that were there and I still that was like five years ago I still sometimes every it was sad okay this is a serious Spongebob collecting can be <laughs> I sometimes think about this crochet pillow and I'm man I should have picked that up that's when you know you have a fixation <laughs> <laughs> but we finally got the crochet kit here, the SpongeBob one. That one was sealed, so I'll still regret it a little bit. But still, we got it in the collection, checked off. That is amazing. Will I ever crochet a uh, SpongeBob 8x8 inch pillow? Probably not. I think my head's already bigger than 8x8. So it probably won't be used for very much. I'll just keep it in the box. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh, and there is a Nick Knowledge in the back. For those of you guys that are not in the know. And if you're not in the know, how did you not know? <laughs> All right, the next up here, you guys know we already have these in the collection, so we won't spend too much time on them, but we got the complete first season, the complete second season, and also the complete third season here. This is personally my favorite season. Let me know in the comments of the first three seasons of SpongeBob, which one is your favorite? I love season number three so much. I feel like it's just at its peak right there. Like, it really kind of got their stride moving. And plus, I guess because they had switched to digital, I feel like maybe after the second season, they they were getting more used to digital and they were able to kind of really push that a little bit further whereas the second season they were just getting used to digital rather than the first season which was done with cell animation let's check the disc out and make sure they're okay before we give them a ranking i mean if disc number one is perfect then i mean it's safe to say the rest probably are too so disc number one has a less mild scratching but nothing too serious let's check disc number three because if they didn't watch all three yeah I, I, that's what i've noticed in a lot of the season disc usually if the first disc is pretty good then 
and you're all right. Like this looks like they probably watched the first episode, the first disc, and then I never watched the second disc or the third disc because the third third disc looks untouched. And then second disc, I would say is either going to be an untouched or a moderate untouched. So I would I would beg it might be safe to say that season two and three may be also untouched unless they just watched the first couple episodes of this one. They were like, okay, let's watch season two. So the season two box set is amazing. You have so many references all over the packaging for those of you guys who may have not seen it incredible you could pause it and find probably 20 30 different references on that box but let's take a look here at disc number one it has the second note from Steven Hillenberg there still in it and as I suspected two untouched completely so essentially a brand new season two here not sealed but I mean the disc quality is brand new and this is the original disc for season two uh, season one currently looks like this season two currently looks like like this and season three currently looks like this so when you see these boxes that means it's from their original release on DVD like the first time they came out so let's take a look here at season three I mean even the box is better on season three I mean you got the holographic with the window that you can switch around to have different characters appearing in that window you got plankton ripping out of the back there it's more compact for each disc or a little bit thinner and I have more references on them like it's just real season three was it man let's take a look at disc one here though disc one is a little dusty but it's not bad it doesn't look as any scratches and then we'll go straight to disc three they're all really dusty i don't really know why but there's no damage on any of them so another box set that kind of checks out here another 10 out of 10 here uh, I mean, this is a SpongeBob video guy, so expect a lot of tins here. So this is a throwback for me. I, like I said, when I was a kid, I had a fully decked out SpongeBob bedroom. Some items, I, I, I don't remember them until I see them. And this is one of those items I remember having in my bedroom at the time. And that is this one right here. The SpongeBob Sponge Riders, born to be weird. And like I said, this was during the West Coast Choppers era here in Southern California. And maybe worldwide, but over here in California, West Coast Choppers was huge. It took place in Orange County. The TV show was on constantly. There was merchandise for, for every brand, whether it was Old Navy, Target, they were releasing their own like, you know, motorcycle themed memorabilia and merch. And there was actually a lot of SpongeBob products that were coming out during that time too. And this is one of them as well. So really cool poster here. Not in the best shape ever. Probably could be flattened out to be looking a little bit better, but definitely not garbage material. Like it's definitely still worth keeping. So I'll probably iron this guy out. I'm gonna go ahead and give it for the condition. I'm gonna give it a seven good noodle stars. But man, is that a mean poster. And as far as value goes, I mean, I think getting all three of these seasons for 30 bucks is kind of a deal. All right, another item we don't have in the collection. So these, I'm putting this up we do have to the left here and don't have to the right. So the season disc we do have already, of course, but these ones we don't have. We do not have this guy either. This is a SpongeBob kickboard, which I guess is, I thought it was like a boogie board, but it's a kickboard. So so you can see right here, it's kind of like if you don't know how to swim or if you're just not good at swimming, you can put this on your chest and just kind of paddle with your legs, you know, just kind of kick forward. That is pretty cool. It's got the adorable SpongeBob here. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what scene this is. I know it's on Goo Beach. We'll play the scene right here where he looks just like this, just slightly edited. And then you got Patrick back here too. And this is from 2008, so a little bit later. I'm noticing a lot of this stuff is kind of that 2004 to 2008 period stuff, with exception to maybe a couple items that you'll see in here. Let's go ahead and get something older out of here. And all this stuff is relatively dusty, but I mean, that's to be expected. I mean, they probably just had it on a shelf or something like that. So let's get this tin out that was full of stuff. Some of it's like weirdly dusty though. Like this thing is like really, like it must have been sitting in a garage for a decade or something, but it's amazing. You have have this bungee SpongeBob keychain. I've never seen this. Oh my god. <sighs> Literally flinging tucks. <laughs> <laughs> pesky particles all over the room but look at that OG Spongebob logo on the keychain there if we can get some footage of cleaning it I'll put it up here right now so you guys can see how it turns out but that is super fun like I said I've never seen that before so that's a really cool OG piece there and then inside of here we saw I saw one of these exact same things I thought yes so we have the Spongebob keychain light which again I have this in the collection already this is the Spongebob coral light so this side 
a flashlight. And then this side, of course, we've got our main man, SpongeBob himself. But we do not have it like this. This is a sealed one. So I'm gonna have to clean it up. And it is just, ooh, it is. If a fly landed on this, it would pop off the blister. It is so ready to come off. And it's really dusty, but it is a brand new sealed version of this same flashlight, which is interesting. I don't know why they would have gotten the two of them, unless it was for collector's sake, but hey, I'll take it. And no rankings on these, just too many small items. But if I were to rank anything, it'd be this, a 10, because I don't even know what this actually is. Like, what does this even consist of? If we can find out what this was from, we will It'll put it on screen for you guys. But we have this really weird, like, I feel like these magnets in the front have to do something with it. I don't know. But this really epic SpongeBob paddy wagon from the movie. He's got the Krusty Krab flag there in the background. But there's this big magnet on the front or this big magnet on the back that seems like it would do something, but there's no rails on the bottom that like seems like it was a part of a track too. It says learning curve, ink. So if you guys um have any information or maybe you own this as a kid, let me know what this went to or what it actually did. But it says learning curve and it's just this really good sculpt of them in the paddy wagon, which a lot of times Patrick's not in the paddy wagon with SpongeBob. This is one of those few ones where you actually do get both of them. Oh, and it's so cute. You got Patrick's hand actually behind SpongeBob, just kind of like they're just hanging out together, you know, riding in the paddy wagon with the pickle wheels and all. So also inside of here, what do we have? We have the snowboarding uh, Nick Candy keychain here. This one is pretty beat up, you know, we got the, the that Squidward nose, he's Squidward, I'm Squidward, we're all Squidward nose. This Mr. Oh my, mother of pearl. <laughs> He flew so far, 2008. I believe this would be probably a cake topper because I can't think of any series of Burger King toys or meal toys that this would have gone with, but it's like a barrel and then you press this button on the back here that's kind of gunky, but again, we're gonna clean everything up and it shoots Mr. Krabs the top of his body, which I don't even know why they'd make this a product that's kind of horrid, but um, he's feeling it now. <laughs> <laughs> and what else do we have in here? We also have this from the uh, Atlantis Square Pantis. These two SpongeBob figures, one with a peg leg and then one of him is like a, an Atlantean god. And I believe these were like water decoders. You put like a little water on that image and it like reveals something. But these figures are just Burger King toys, but still really, really sick. And this one's got an awesome design. And a SpongeBob button. It's a classic, you know, button. I think this came in a four pack actually with four other uh, similar buttons, but we got one of them. And then the tin itself, which I'm 99% sure we already have this tin, but hey, still an awesome pickup. And I know somebody over on our whatnot streams is going to want to pick this up and anything that I have extra, if we get a duplicate here on the show, I always put it over on whatnot where we either auction it off, we do giveaways sometimes and whatever, every cent that we make over there on whatnot, it comes right back over here. So that way we can do pickups like this. So either way, any item, whether it's a duplicate or not, is able to add to the collection in some way. So this one is really, really cool. But like I said, I think I may have this one. Also have this Gary, I believe from the Truth or Square Burger King promotion they had. And then this one is like a, and then a little standee for a Burger King figure. But we want to talk about tins, man. This is the tin here. Oh, happy day. I feel like there's some of you guys in the comments right now who could, just from watching this show enough, like look at the aesthetic of this and guess what year this is. I don't even have to look at the date and I want to say 2006. 2007, ah, come on, it was close. That late 2000s, like, it just has that look, you know? And you can feel it, like, you can feel it emanating, like, that Target commercial, um, like, I don't even know what you call this, like, postmodern, overly saturated color look. You'll get some better shots of it on screen here, but we do not have this tin in the collection. And I'm trying to collect as many of these SpongeBob tins as I possibly can. I don't know how many we have, but I love collecting these tin lunch boxes. I mean, I, it's impossible to have every SpongeBob product that's ever made. I'm gonna try. But <laughs> if I could get every lunch tin they ever made, I, I would be a happy man, at least to complete one thing 100%. This is one of my favorite things. The artwork is beautiful from side to side, the back, the bottom. And of course, you already know it was made by the Tin Box Company. Unique tins for the kid and all of us. And this is the note for Steven Hillenberg in the third box set. And to be honest, I didn't even know there was one in the box. I think mine does not have Steven Hillenberg's note from season three, but this one has it. So I believe after the third season, he stopped writing these notes inside the box sets and mine was missing the note from the third season. So that's a new addition as well. Next up here, we've got these SpongeBob Wilson golf balls, but I think these are actually slightly different 
different from mine. Maybe they aren't, but we got the SpongeBob, and it also says Bob Le Ponge, which is the French version of SpongeBob as well. And these are from 2009. And just these golf balls gonna go for like 20 to 30 bucks. So that in itself made this whole box definitely paid for. I do have this box of golf balls, but a lot of golfers, you know, they want to flex. So like, you know, just like any other type of uh, people, they like to flex and flaunt with their gear. So a lot of times those little covers that go on top of the golf clubs, you know, they're fans of different shows. That people that golf are fans of shows and cartoons just as much as we are. So they like to get certain ones that are themed and they can be really expensive if you have like a golf cover, a club cover of like Bugs Bunny or Pink Panther. And the same thing with their balls. They just like to use some, uh, some different and more interesting balls than a typical white ball just for the fun of it. So I found more of those uh, launchers that went with that Mr. Krabs. The Mr. Krabs, I'm pretty sure that that little stuff that is inside the bottom there, that's old cake. And I think this might also have some old cake on it. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure these were, at one point, cake toppers. We have the SpongeBob one, and we also have a Patrick one. They all have like cake residue on them. So I'm pretty sure whoever got this just had it on their cake, put it to the side, and that was the end of it. And there's Patrick as well, and they all do that same little feature there, so. There's no other ones in here that I can see so far, but I do see something very cool, and that is a sealed box of the SpongeBob Animal Crackers from Keebler. So you guys can see right here, I mean, I don't, it's empty actually, so it probably was a resealed box. This one released in 2009, and of course the edible characters in this case were Conch Street, SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward. And they're a good source of calcium. Probably not anymore, but they, they were. <laughs> We also have a SpongeBob themed uh, playing card deck here, which the cards look like they have been used maybe, or actually, no. oh my goodness. That is a beautiful set of cards. Look at this. Oh man. If they had these cards in Vegas, I wouldn't have a problem with losing all the time. Yeah, I don't really gamble, but that seemed like an appropriate joke. <laughs> I, I don't lose at all because I don't gamble, but if I did, if they had these cards, I might consider it. <laughs> That's so sick. And you guys can see the different artworks that are on there too, like SpongeBob on the jellyfish. You got Patrick uh, in SpongeBob's pants while he's uh, talking to SpongeBob doing his boating test. <laughs> All right, next up here we have some booklet stuff. So this is the SpongeBob movie book, which we have this in the collection, but this one I think is in even better shape than the one we have already. The SpongeBob movie novelization with a middle insert with pictures, so that way you can't say there was no pictures. And we have a SpongeBob diary, and it looks like they did use it. There's about two pages that are ripped out, but other than those two pages, the rest of it is pretty empty, so that's a pretty cool little uh, throwback product. But it says my diary, and you can also write your name right there. I love the little transparent like neon green uh, clasp on there too. The whole thing just fits perfectly in that 2005 era. And then we have another Spongebob notebook here. This one's from 2010. And again, uh, either unused or they just ripped the pages out, but I don't see anything in here. A nice little addition there. I don't have this notebook in the collection, so that's a nice little add. Got a nice little stack here of stuff getting added to the collection here. I've been trying to keep it separated, but I kind of forgot about that. So let me just move all the stuff that we don't have already um, into the collection over over here. There's quite a lot, as you're seeing, that we don't have. That's how much SpongeBob products they have. Like, I, it's like, I'll never probably be to the point where everything I get, or every time we go out, I'm finding stuff that I already have, because if there's something SpongeBob, there's still like, uh, at least 50% of the time, it's something I don't have, because there's so much stuff out there. Ooh. I just realized this SpongeBob from the Atlantis Corpantis has this little secret compartment. One of my favorite things is secret compartments, with a little Atlantis Corpantis sticker in there. <laughs> Next up, definitely needs to be washed here, has a lot of grime on it, but that is the uh, SpongeBob plug and play. Again, another product that is kind of, whoa! This might be a different one. I am not sure what this game consists of, but this is a new plug and play to the collection, which is a win. This is the SpongeBob plug and play, but if you look at it closely, this is the same one we have in the collection, the classic SpongeBob plug and play, but I do know there was a later iteration of it, but I wasn't aware there was two separate different buttons. I just thought it came in a different box, but there's an A and a B button here, whereas our uh, typical SpongeBob plug and play only has one button. So I would assume this might have some updated or newer games on there, which is a big win because 
because anytime we can add a new SpongeBob plug and play is a huge win because we're adding a whole new roster of games to the collection. And I'm trying to get all the plug and plays. We've got about freaking, I don't even know, like like seven or eight different plug and plays. For, so I'll take a new edition one here. Holy cow, 2009. This is a 2009 iteration of it. This is incredible. Do I wish they would have made the design slightly different? Yes, but at least, you know, at least they, we, we, we got it, okay? Okay, and then we got the classic SpongeBob tie beanie baby. Uh, I mean, like besides this full SpongeBob body pillow, I think most of us grew up at least had one of these tie uh, SpongeBob plushies. So here's one right here. Very, very adorable, well built. Nothing much, too much to say about it. It's from 2006, so you know, uh, one year after it's a movie, my man was still out there slinging beanie babies. <laughs> Win. And I know we have this in the collection already, so that'll be going to the left here. Next up, we've got the SpongeBob Universal. Studios drink cup from 2002. We do have this one in the collection currently. I mean, is it back here? It might be back here. Yeah, so it's up there. It's right, right there. You can see it kind of barely. Zoom in. Zoom in. It's blurry, but it's right there. <laughs> but I've seen these guys a billion and six times, and nine times out of ten, the straw is what's missing because kids chew on them. They use them to do that, uh, you know, that whistling thing that sounds like. So therefore, all the straws are usually gone, and this one's no different. The straw is missing on this guy, but nonetheless, still an amazing sculpt there and an amazing figure. And you can probably buy another straw online, but since we already have it, I'm gonna be putting it to the left here. Okay, so now we're starting to get into some of the smaller stuff here. This one is really beat up, unfortunately, because it is a really obscure product from 2008. It's like one of those straggled uh, green label products. There's so much going on in this box. There's just, I don't know, there's little pills in there that do something. Uh, this kid's got a tattoo, I guess. And then there's like this little friggin' injector thing. Some kind of like weird water syringe. <laughs> the whole packaging, just something just off about it. I don't know. So it kind of freaks me out. But it's got like some pills, I guess. Okay, they're tinted bath fizzlers. I guess that was before bath bombs. Temporary tattoos and body wash. And it doesn't even say what the syringe is. Dispenses colored water into your tub. Okay, so I guess you put that little pill in this uh, fizzy thing here and then you put water in that it fizzes up and then you put that into your bathtub and inject it into your bath water to make it colored did you just put the pill in the bath water i don't know i don't know if i would like this one or uh i'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a 10 though weird one but i'm gonna give it a 10 <laughs> it's just a strange product i'm glad we got it in the collection nonetheless but uh yeah there's that. All right, the next up here we have from 2008 from Jack's Pacific. I might have to take the tags off of this one. I don't know because man is dusty. Man looks like they went to Garati Island and they left him there for a hundred years. He's, he, the camera doesn't really pick it up, but he is completely dust coated. I don't necessarily know that's gonna be something I can get out without washing him. So I might have to take the tags off and just give him a bath. But this, it's sick nonetheless. You got him with the black belt, which I don't really know if SpongeBob's deserving of a black belt quite yet. Yet, but uh, he definitely found one at least. He looks just as horrified as I am by all this dust. <laughs> We have a Spongebob Lego minifig, and I'm pretty sure the entire set for the um, chum bucket, for the Lego chum bucket set, is in here. You've got a little plankton piece right here, it's like a Krabby Patty robot. Part of the chum bucket is like still built here, but a lot of it is like separated. I'd have to like literally get every piece and try to see if it's all in there, but there is some aspects of it. There's this Spongebob cowboy here, which got like a Bonnie and Clyde treatment. He's like in pieces, literally separated everywhere we have this really gunked up so many stickers on his face uh, I don't remember what line this is for SpongeBob I think it may be like I don't even know maybe dare to be square I'm not even sure that's going to the side we have a few more of these ones but they're just they, they have so many stickers on them and one of my least favorite things in this world is sticky and gritty yeah there's a lot of gritty in this video a lot of this stuff is very gritty with dust I can handle gritty because gritty is usually cleanable stickiness unconsented stickiness I can't deal with. I can clean it up, but this has so much unconsented stickiness with stickers on every single angle here. I just can't, I can't do it. When I collect stuff in the cavern here, I like to keep, make sure everything that comes in here is clean, as dust free and as stick free as it could possibly be. And these items are just beyond the level of cleaning that I want to put into them with the dust accumulated on top of the stickiness. We got SpongeBuck right there with his hands out doing whatever he's doing. I don't know what the heck he's doing there, but kind of like this. Pay up, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> another day, another nickel. 
Michael. Let me get it. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing in that one, but he's doing something. And then we have this Patrick that is like, also I think from Truth or Square, and he looks more pink than when he came out. I don't know why he's that pink, but it, he's super pink. Like pinker, like is it pinker than his release? That's so strange. This is a SpongeBob voice recorder that is now dead, I believe, from uh, the SpongeBob movie, I wanna say. And then this SpongeBob watch, but the nose is broken. And I used to have this exact same watch as a kid, but it was in the Mermaid Man variation. And his pants dropped just like that to show you the time. So you can look at his clock. <laughs> A Spongebob pin. Uh, like I said, some small odds and ends here, guys. You guys let me know. Do you think this whole lot was worth the 30 bucks that I paid for it? I want to say yeah, but you guys can be the ultimate decider of this, uh, especially the stuff at the beginning there. Obviously, towards the end here, I mean, coolest thing towards the end here is probably some of the Lego minifigures here, but a lot of those small trinkets here at the end. You guys let me know. What was your favorite item? If any of you thought it was worth it, stay tuned here. We're going to add a couple of these items here in the cavern, and whatever doesn't get added here in the cavern will be going to our vault to preserve and add into our overall collection. But hit the like button if you guys haven't already. I would appreciate it. So that way it pushes this video out there to more people just like you that like the same stuff. So they can check it out and hang out with us. And subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to join our Patreon to help make all of the videos that we do here possible, you can sign up for only $2 a month. And you'll get an extended version of this video with some behind the scenes and extended content that will only be over there on Patreon. For this video again and every video that we've done for the last eight months and we will be doing going forward. It's the ultimate way to watch comfort cartoons and all those videos are 100% ad free as well too. There's some other perks as well too. So all that'll be at the top of the description to go check out. And if you want to see us live, we're live on Whatnot every single Friday where you may see a lot of these items over there on our Whatnot stream. Whenever I pick up something for the collection that ends up being a duplicate, something that I have already in the collection, I put it over there on Whatnot so that way we can use that again right here on the show as our budget to pick up more stuff in the line to continue to keep growing this. So if you want to be a part of that, too. Go take a look at that. And like I said, let's add some stuff to the collection. But before that, you know the drill. Scan it. Right, so we have the two season threes here and I mean they're pretty much the same I think this one's a little bit better it doesn't have like some of this damage here I was gonna take the note that's out of this one and put it into ours in the collection But seeing this big ring dinger here and a few other things I think I'm just gonna put this whole box in there as a swapped one overall It's just in better shape So this is gonna be the new season three for watchability in the collection All right, so for this one right here I do want to add it to the collection, but again the cavern is just for the displayability aspect and we did add all of the other ones but they do have a distinct different design whereas from a distance this one looks quite identical to that one and also the one we have in the box so since this one looks the same i'm gonna add this to our archive where we also have our bob the builder one we also have the door of the explorer one we do have the nick the nickelodeon one over there in the nick section but this will be in the vault i do want to acquire all of these but for the time being i think that one makes a better display piece being more people had that one all right so we have the tin set up here when i added the new one in right here uh, honestly at this point i don't even know which tins have what <laughs> <laughs> I know that the tins all have different things in them. Some of them, uh, I couldn't tell you anymore, but I think this one's one of them, and this one's one of them. And that, that one right there, too. Maybe this one. Maybe. <laughs> but right, this, box time you. this is beautiful, man. There's some items in here like this and a couple other things that I'm willing to take out, but they're just kind of filling in the spaces. So you still have a lot of room there. Could even also move the items in the back there and do a fourth tier. But I just want to add as many of them as we possibly can, because, man, those things look sweet. All right. So there it is. All right, I was gonna put this guy up here in our green label stuff, but the card's coming off, so I'm gonna re-glue this guy on there to make it a little bit more secure. I got all the way up here on my step stool and everything. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs>
And this guy's coming over here. I'm gonna be reorganizing this shelf a little bit anyway, so for right now, I'm just gonna put it right here next to our Jimmy Jars. That's what I have to call them, Jimmy Jars. Sounds like Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Jarson. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to see me do more of these pick up type of videos, I'll definitely try. They don't come up every single day, but if I can make that happen, I will. If you guys want to see it, let me know. If you guys haven't already, subscribe, hit the like button, and if you want to support the show further, you can sign up for our Patreon, where you can sign up for only $2 a month, and when you sign up, you get an extended version of this video and every other video that I upload, and they're 100% ad free. It's the ultimate way to watch comfort cartoons. We do a lot of stuff and add a lot of stuff that we just can't add here on the YouTube videos, including behind the scenes and uh, just, just different conversations that you would only see over there. So go take a look. We also have a special Easter video coming out over there that's exclusive to Patreon, so go take a look at that as well. And if you guys want to see us live, we are live every single Friday on the app Whatnot. It's a live streaming platform, kind of like eBay meets Twitch. You can pick up stuff live during our shows on Fridays, and I'm not the only person over there on whatnot there's pokemon sellers funko pop sellers sellers for just about anything you can think of and when you sign up you get 15 dollars for free so go take a look at that down below all the information you need will be down there i'll see you guys in this video right here that i know you're gonna love thank you again so much for just watching this video i'll see you beautiful people in the next one adios and bloop